Hello everybody, I'm Prof Stuart Derbyshire. I'm an Associate Professor in the Department of Psychology. My major interest is pain and my broad area of research is sensation and perception. If you do psychology, you'll probably meet me in biopsych. And uh, my name is Lee Nang and I'm a lecturer here in the Department of Psychology. Uh, my interest mainly is in youth development and also anything to do with education primarily the development of curiosity and also creativity. Thank you. Um, okay, so I think we have um, a few questions uh, that have been collected already. So um, let me just read the first one out. Uh, what are some of the prerequisites to take the psychology course in FASS? So the, the major prerequisite is that you have to get a B minus in PL 1101E, which is our intro to psych, and then I think it's PL 2131, but it's the um, research methods and statistics module. Do I get them right, Luneng? Yeah, so I think that's basically it. So those are the prerequisites in order for you to take the psych. Okay, thank you. Um, career paths for psychology, um, and how does this differ from sociology? <laughs> yes, yeah, so these are quite difficult questions because, you know, I mean, obviously giving out career advice is a bit tricky. I, I don't know about Li Neng, but I haven't applied for a job or looked at the job market for about 30 odd years outside of psychology, so I'm not the best person um, to give advice on what you do with your degree, but Broadly speaking, psychology, there are some set career paths. If you want to do clinical psychology, forensic psychology, research psychology, then you'll need to do a second degree in psychology, and that's a fairly um, set path. Um, more broadly, um, psychology is more interested, interested in individual behavior, sociology and group behavior. So, uh, you know, the career paths will differ based on that, but you really should do your own research, your own investigation to figure out what it is you can do with psychology, what it is you do um, with sociology. And uh, I think as Stuart mentioned, the question basically, if you're asking this question, I think one of the things is you need to probably, or you are probably assuming that there is actually like a, a for psychology and there's like a career path for sociology. But uh, from what I know is that uh, we, the degrees that you're getting for psychology and sociology are general degrees. Right, and this differs from professional degrees like medicine, engineering, whereby they do have kind of like a career path prepared for you. But psychology and sociology actually allows you to explore different pathways. There's no one career path per se. So in this, this be potentially some overlaps, and um, with sociology as well. So if you are asking like what potentially what are the kind of careers that our graduates go into, I think they go into a variety of different things. Some of them go on to take their graduate degrees and they become psychologists, you know, in terms of the clinical path or educational psychologists and a variety of different ones of them. Other job jobs can include um, going into the different governmental agencies, marketing, HR, consultancy, and so also the social service sector. So a whole different bunch of different things that you can go into. Thank you. Um, shall we move to the next? Yeah, I'll be taking psychology sure. as my second major. Uh, will I have to plan out my own modules or will there be a recommended timetable that I can follow? Um, and also when can I select, start selecting my modules? Maybe yes. I go first on this. Sure, do it. Um, I think planning, planning out whether you have to plan out your own modules, the answer will be yeah. That's a great thing about being in arts, uh, arts major. You actually have a lot of freedom to actually decide on how your timetable looks like, depending on the modules that you want to take. Right? Is that at least in psychology, there are some prerequisites that is needed. For you know, the higher level modules, so whereby you need to take 1101 first before you can take other modules. So just take a look, you can find all this information on the websites. A recommended timetable, I don't think there's one. You can, of course, you get an idea of what is and how they did, but I don't think for you to actually do that. Right, Stuart? Yeah. So, 
the, there's there's the core modules that you need to cover, but it's it's basically up to you how you organize it. Um, there's no strict organization of the timetable. You've got the freedom to make your own way through it. Thank you. Let's have the next question. Uh, internship and mentorship programs, uh, what, what's available uh, to prepare psychology undergraduates for future career environments? Yeah, so this relates back to an earlier question about career paths in some ways. Because there's no strict career direction in psychology, there aren't really internships or placements that we can put you into because it's basically um, a general degree. If you're asking what can I do actively within psychology, well then that's slightly different. There's lots of things that you can do. There's opportunities to do um, research projects through what we call a Europe or an independent study module. Those are four MC modules that you can do with us. Um, there's also an honors thesis at the end of the degree, which if you're doing honors, you can also go into. So there are options and ways in which you can get clinical, forensic and research experience in our, within our department. But placements outside don't really exist. Is that right, Li Neng? So I think that the department for the internship program at the department, but I think FESS does. So we do have the FESS internship program. So both are offered at faculty levels. And I will say many of this internship be a preparation for you for your future career, depending on what you do. So I would say go find out more about that and you should be able to find something that suits you. Thank you. Next question, please. How many modules must I take per semester uh, that have to be related to psychology? <laughs> um, and then what kinds of uh, UEs, unrestricted, unrestricted electives can I take? Um, you know, can I take from any faculty or only from FASS? I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you to take the lead on this one, Lina. <laughs> I think that's in terms of how many modules you must take uh, that's related to psychology. Again, as I said, I think not to trust you would like to take and how you would like to learn, right? So in terms of this, there are no strict requirements about how many modules you need to take per semester. Unrestricted electives, I think what you can do is basically anything that's outside of the major is considered as unrestricted uh, elective. So I think many of this, much of this information you do find this uh, through the faculty website in terms of uh, what actually constitutes your UE, what doesn't, uh, and you should find this out a little bit more. Yeah, I think you have much more clarity there. Great, and I'm in the um, I'm taking a minor in psychology, and I would like to find out more about how to go about signing up for modules and the requirements for a minor. So the sign up for the modules is the same as for any other module. Um, if you look at the departmental website, you'll see details there. The mod reg system. Um, it's the same for all the degrees and fast, as far as I'm aware. Um, the requirement is that you take PL one one o one e and PL two one three one. Um, but you don't need to get the B minus, you just need to pass them for, for a minor. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, what are some of the prospects? Okay, another career related uh, <laughs> question. Anything else to add? Uh, no, I mean, so. I think what we have said about careers. Yeah, it's a, general, it's a general degree, so it does open up a lot of different careers to you. and. and but you know, you, you must do your own research, do your own investigation and, and figure out if psychology is gonna to lead to the kind of career you want and how you will use it. We, we can't plot that out for you. That's, that's, that's your, your call. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. So now I think we're gonna to go to the live um, section of our session today. So for students who have just joined us, um, you can post your questions on our poll everywhere um, platform, you can scan the QR code or go to the web link um, down at the bottom of the screen. Um, and you can also upvote questions that you would like to be answered. So uh, please go there. And um, so let's jump right in um, with the first question. So uh, about the COVID situation, um, would participation in the research participation program still be a requirement for modules such as uh, 1101E and 2131? 
Yeah, it, it will still be a requirement, but obviously we recognize that COVID's made everything difficult. Most projects in the first semester um, will be all online. So it should be a lot easier to um, dispense with your requirements given that everything can be done from your computer pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yep. Second question, uh, is it hard to enroll for, oh, hang on. Uh, is, okay, let's, let's do this one first. Is a minor in psychology useful? Um, how does that help in a career? Is it useful? Um, psychology allows you to understand how humans work. So I assume that number one, as long as you're working with humans, I think it can be useful to some degree, depending on how you apply it. Because knowledge itself, whether it's useful or not, actually depends on whether you're able to apply it to the specific context that you're in. So that comes back to you in a way, right? And the context that you find yourself in. So I'll say that, well, if chances are you'll be working with people quite a bit, a minor in psychology definitely can help. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, all degrees are useful. So that it's a, that's a tricky question. You know, and like, it's a little bit instrumental. Useful to what end? And again, to come back to the same point, you must think through this yourself. We, we, can't, we can't organize a path through your life that's going to be good for you. Great, thank you. Um, let's go to the next question, which is, is it hard to enroll uh, to PL2131, especially for a year one student in SEM1, uh, even if I rank it as number one? Um, additionally, will the MCs for that be counted as our UE or into our major requirements? Uh, is it hard to enroll? Psychology is a popular degree and sometimes we can have issues with students not being able to get on to the module they want in the semester they want. Generally speaking, most people who rank it number one will get it, but we do have to prioritize people who might have not been able to get it before and sometimes people get disappointed. I, I can't predict how that will work its way through um, each semester. It's just a judgment call. I would say that if you want to major in psychology and you meet the requirements, then generally speaking, you, you will eventually get everything that you need. I don't understand the second part of the question. Do you, Lineng? Will the MCs be counted as our UE or into a major requirement? I think this depends on whether you subsequently declare psychology as your major, right? So if you do declare as your major, it will be counted in, as part of your major requirements. If not, it will not be counted in your UE because UE needs to be outside of your major, right? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think that probably answers the question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's have a question about uh, clinical psychology. So what would you recommend um, if I'm interested in becoming a clinical psychologist? Should I do my master's straight away or... Uh, is it better to gain relevant work experience first before continuing with masters? Oh, again, it's tricky because individual circumstances and context matter here. So what I would say is if you want to be a clinical psychologist, one of the barriers, one of the difficulties a lot of applicants face is getting clinical experience. So very broadly, if you had the opportunity to get some clinical experience, I would probably take that because you can always enroll for the masters at another time. But like I say, you know, individual circumstances and context matter here. So that's difficult to give you a straight up yes, no answer. Mm -hmm. And I think Stuart gets it, uh, has answered the question quite well. It really depends on you in the end, because for people who want to become a clinical psychologist, I think one thing you need to take note of is that uh, entrance to the clinical programs is very competitive. And one of the things that they are looking out for and we are looking out for is whether you are aware of what exactly a clinical psychologist do. Have you actually experienced it before? Because many of us, uh, what I realized over the years is many students come in, they have an idea of what clinical psychologists do. But uh, that may not correspond to reality. And I think it's very important to get relevant experience to understand whether this is something you're going to be involved in for a significant part of the next part of your life uh, before you make a decision on whether you want to jump straight into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, psychology diploma graduates, will they have an advantage in the exposure module? 
if in your diploma you have covered the concepts before, then definitely you will have some kind of advantage in the exposure module because it won't be something that's totally new to you, right? Um, at least that's what I understand. So if you are saying that you have taken some kind of psychology related course before at the diploma level, you probably have exposure to some of the concepts that we'll be talking about in Mama 101 e yeah, I mean, essentially, if you've already done some work, then you're more likely to be able to answer the questions. But that's a little bit like asking if I've read the textbook, well, they at an advantage over the people that haven't. Yes, yes, you will. You know, it, studying psychology puts you at an advantage for psychology. Great, thank you. Um, question about SPSS, will we be using that for data analysis? Uh, if not, what software will, will we be using for data analysis? Yeah, it's still the go-to package as far as I'm aware. Um, and I don't see that changing enormously in the next few years. Some people are playing with R and some people are playing with JASP, but I think SPSS is set to be the standard for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Stuart has answered that question. Of course, if you are really interested in exploring, JASP is one, way, one place you can look into. Uh, and R is the, another one, another package that some of our colleagues here do use. So you can explore that as well. But most likely it was to be SPSS. Thank you. Um, is it possible to SU the two prerequisite modules, uh, 1101 and 2131? I believe so. Yes, right? Yep, yep. They're not special. I, th I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, I, if there are any of the admin colleagues are on who would like to answer that, uh, feel free to do that in the chat as well. Um, let's go to the next question. If I fulfill the two gates by SEM1, can I start my call modules in SEM2? Uh, is it recommended to do so? Um, and are there any specific modules to select for level three um, and level four if I hope to continue to post-grad studies in specific specializations? Uh, okay, so that's a lot of different components there. So I, I, I believe you can start your core modules as soon as you've passed the prerequisites and declared your, your major. Um, I, don't, I don't see any reason why you couldn't do that. So maybe someone correct me if I'm wrong there. As to what, what, what you should select, um, again, without really knowing you individually, that would be difficult. I mean, if you know which area of research you want to pursue already, congratulations bear in mind that you might change your mind on the way um, but sure you, you would select um, the, the, the modules that are most relevant to what it is you want to do anything else? So I think to answer that were quite well already okay um, well uh, talking about future pathways um, what are the requirements for the direct psychology master's program oh, oh I, I don't recall the exact details of it. I did cover it in my talk, so you're very welcome to go there. It's also covered on the website, but it, it's, it's far enough away that you don't have to worry about it immediately, but yeah, those details are available. Yep. yep. So I, I think when it comes to details like this, it's best to go to the website so that you can have a clear breakdown. This is what those requirements, because just in case we miss some, right? So. Yeah. Go back to the website, it's all there. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, any tips on how to excel as a psychology major? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's tricky. I mean, you know, I want to be a bit corny and say love what you do. Um, if, you, if you're genuinely interested in how human beings behave, think, um, and so forth, then, then sure, you probably will excel. Um, beyond that, you know, it, 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 it's hard to give you clear directions on how to be an excellent human being. Obviously, Lee Nang and I have succeeded, so just emulate us. <laughs> how, I mean, how do you excel as a psych major? Um, it's a big question. It's kind of hard to answer at this moment of time. But it, it, at this moment of time, I need to clarify the question. Are you asking how do you score well? Mm. Okay. If you're asking how do you perform and score A's in the different psych 
modules, then it will depend on the module and the discipline that you're looking at. Psychology as a discipline, actually we're a very broad discipline and each of the different subspecialties actually take on uh, different, slightly different angles in approaching the understanding of human behavior. So I would say that it's not an easy uh, one pathway to actually take on. Uh, but by and large, uh, think critically, ask good questions. Uh, those are very, very important skills as a basis to actually excel as a psych uh, major. Secondly, uh, do not assume that there's always one correct answer. I think the most common question that I always get when I'm teaching the 1000 course is that people always ask me, will this come out in the exam? If this comes out in the exam, do I write this to get the right answer? Sometimes the answer will be A, B, and C, and all are equally plausible. And you probably need to learn how to clearly argue why A will be better than C, depending on the evidence that you have. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, very popular question. How important is it to be good at math? Take psych. Yes, yeah, so it, you don't have to be a maths expert to do psychology. Um, but I, what, I, what I tend to say is this, is if, if you're numerate and if you did okay at maths in the past, then you, you're probably going to be fine. There's, there's nothing that you have to do that's super advanced and you can certainly avoid really advanced statistics if you want to. So that, that's, that's not a problem. If, however, you are scared at, by numbers, and if you just scrape through your O-level maths or whatever it was you had to do and you decided then you never wanted to look at another number again, then, then probably psychology is going to make you miserable. Um, so if you're literally scared of numbers, it, then, then yeah, it's a bad course. Mm. And I think Stuart basically answered that quite well. If, you want, if I would say that if you don't need to be very good at math, as what Stuart said, right? But you need to have a certain level of competence to be able to understand statistics because in the end, that is the way that most of us use to understand the evidence that's there. What's the data telling us? So if you have no idea what you're doing, you're going to struggle. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm going to skip a question and go to the, uh, another proficiency question. So um, if your command of English is not as good, can you still take psychology? Mm -hmm. You, you can certainly take it. I mean, I, I would caution that, that psychology is a very argumentative subject. And, and as Li Nang mentioned earlier, you know, that, that sometimes, well, very often, in fact, that there's multiple right answers to a question. And what we're looking for a student to do is to work through the evidence for each of those answers and give us their opinion, their reason for why they think answer A is, is the best way to go or B or whatever. And so that does involve a lot of basically language-based reasoning through essays and so forth. So it, 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 it will be potentially a barrier. So then that's a question of how much you want to fight with that particular barrier. And again, can't answer that part of it for you. Mm. Yep. Mm. Along the same um, lines, um, are the examinations um, writing in intensive? Well, they vary a lot. So I, I'm, I'm a bit old fashioned and I, I, I don't like setting exams that don't have long essay questions. Um, I think it's the best way to assess how you understood the material. But you know, not everybody does that. But it, it, it's fair to say that a psychology degree involves quite a lot of writing. Mm. Mm. So as, as Stuart answered, the short answer to that is yes. If you assume that it's going to be writing intensive and you find out that it is not, then it's a bonus, right? But if you assume that it is writing intensive to some degree, hey, you're prepared for that, I think it's great. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I entered FASS through the direct admission program uh, with first major being psychology. May I ask what will happen if I do not fulfill the B minus prerequisite for the two modules? then I think that means you won't be able to continue. Um, but you know, in, in all honesty, if, if you don't get a B minus and the two prerequisites, then you, you really haven't done any work. It, it's not at that high a barrier. It, it's, you, you should be able to get it. Yep. I think to add on to that, actually, I will say this is that number one, the B minus prerequisites is also actually to help you as a student, because if you realize by taking the two basic level modules and you're unable to do well in it, even if you work hard at it, 
then yeah. you realize that maybe, maybe psychology is not the best major for you to major in. Right? You may be actually good at something else and FASS has a wide choice here for you to actually choose from. And it may be a better idea to actually discover this early on rather than discover this that actually, you know, you're not good at psychology at the end of year three, year four, right? Yeah, Li Nang is much nicer than me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we are about five minutes out from um, 4.30. So we're just going to get through as many um, questions as we can because uh, there are quite a lot actually. Um, and then we will draw it to a close at about 4.30. So um, next question, uh, SPSS and MacBook users are not very compatible. Which yeah. software will MacBook users rely on? That, that's fine. I have a MacBook. I use SPSS, no problem. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Me too. Okay. Uh, what are some research opportunities or internships I can do in my earlier uni years um, other than the lab research and honors thesis? So Stuart mentioned uh, Europe's. Right, and I think because many of the colleagues in the department actually have ongoing research projects that are, uh, that they have, so I think one of the things is to actually get connected with some of the professors that are here that are doing research, and you can find out more about the ongoing research projects that they have. Okay, thank you. Um, psychology is it very content heavy um, in terms of having to read, research, and write a lot? Um, and what do we have to mentally prepare for when, we, when choosing psychology as a major? The answer to that, I will say very quickly, the answer is yes. Is it very content heavy? Yes. There are several different modules that actually we cover a lot of content. Unfortunately, uh, the answer why is it that we have to do that is because psychology is a very broad discipline and in order to give you a wide understanding and enough understanding of what psychology is about, we do have to cover a certain amount of content. Right. Um, so with that, you just have to assume that there is quite a lot of things that you do have to read and understand and process this information. And for me, actually, this is actually a good skill to actually cultivate because right now you do have to learn how to deal with a lot of information that's coming in. Uh, if you're able to do that, that is one way that actually one skill that you can actually cultivate and actually do well in, which can be very useful for you later on in life. Yeah, I, I mean, so I, I don't know if this person has watched the little video that I put together for this, but I mean, I do talk about this in that video. And it, psychology is a, is a difficult subject because there's a lot of arguments and a lot of different opinions about how things work. So I put in an example of even something as simple as naming colors is something that psychologists will argue about. So you must mentally prepare yourself for the fact that you're going to be involved in a lot of uncertainty, argument different projects that point in different directions. If you're this kind of person that doesn't like that, who prefers to have things cut and dry, well, you're gonna be upset in psychology. Great, thank you. Um, oh, question that has jumped to the front. <laughs> Will psychology lectures be recorded and put online? That's, that in this COVID era, that's, that's, well, I mean, some will. Uh, I mean, every module is going to have something online, I would imagine, next semester. Generally speaking, when we, under normal circumstances, most live lectures are not recorded and put online. Now, whether that will change and develop, I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, that's, it's, it's such a mixed bag and, and things are so strange at the moment. It's hard to give a good answer to that. Yeah. So I think it really depends on the pedagogical approaches of the different professors. So it's up to them, right? So each module will probably have a different approach to this. Thank you. Um, more tips on uh, maybe specific modules or skills that you think would be useful for a student uh, pursuing psychology. Spe more tips on any, mo any modules or skills that would be useful. Learn statistics. <laughs> Learning how to do data, I think, is probably one of the most important skills you'll pick up as a psych major because you get comfortable at dealing with it. Uh, the sad part will be that you graduate as a psych degree major and you are unable to do data or unable to understand what data, uh, the process data. Uh, if that's the case, then that'll be very sad for you. So in this case, I'll really say uh, your ability to actually understand what data says, how to deal with it, process it well, uh, something that's a very important skill to pick up here. Yep, that's, I don't have any sad. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, how do I get the relevant 
um, research and clinical experience when I don't have the experience for it? Research, that, that should be fairly straightforward. That There's plenty of opportunities within our department to get involved in research if you want to, so that, that shouldn't be an issue. Clinical experience is always a problem, and I, you, duck and dive, find your opportunities where you can, but there's, there's no path and there's no easy way that we can resolve that one. Mm, I agree. Okay. Um, a question about minors. Um, any minors that you would recommend to take to pair with a psychology uh, major? Um, and if I intend to become a clinical psychologist, would you recommend a minor in public health or health and social sciences? Yeah, again, it, it, you know, individual desires, context, same, same kind of thing. It, ultimately, you've got to enjoy your minor. You've got to want to do it. So that, that should take the priority. Both those um, minors sound perfectly reasonable if you want to pursue a career in clinical psychology. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't split hairs over which one was better. Mm, I agree. And I actually, I will put in another thing because I assume that this question, the person you are looking at is whether there's utility or any use in terms of getting the minor to complement the psychologist a major. I will also say that sometimes when taking a minor that's very different in terms of the approach can actually broaden your way of thinking about the subject and about the discipline. And that can actually be even more useful in the longer run. But you never know. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we're gonna keep going for about five minutes or so. Um, so the next question, um, how can I make my psychology degree stand out from the rest? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm struggling because, you know, obviously there's a path that everybody is gonna go through and, and I can see why you would want to somehow make your journey more interesting, better stand out. Um, again, it's a bit corny, but it, hopefully you come into psychology because you have an interest in human behavior and there's something you want to know. If by the end of your degree, you've really done that and you, whatever it was you came in wanting to know, you've addressed it, you've done a few experiments on it, you've written about it, and you have something that you can say as an answer and carry forward, I kind of feel like that would make you stand out. I'm not saying that's the only way and I'm not saying you have to do that. Um, but that would be one approach that I, I might engage in if I wanted to, to do what you're asking. Any, any thoughts on this, Linang? This is a tough one. I think that is as best an answer I can, as we can give, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, what do you mean by standing out? Standing out from the rest of those other psychology graduates? Standing out from the other disciplines, uh, other graduates in FASS? Uh, it means so many different things. So it's kind of hard to answer that question, actually. Thank you. Um, well, forensic and criminal psychology, um, for, for students who are interested in doing that, are there graduate courses in NUS for forensic or criminal psychology? There are some. I don't think there's an enormous number. Um, like the clinical, uh, it's popular and that's a, you know, it's a tricky route to take, but it's, uh, we, th there, are, there are options. Um, they're, not, they're not massive, they're not extensive, but they're there. Do you know more so than that, Linang? Yeah, I think Stuart basically mentioned that there are modules that you can take that's being offered as an undergraduate. Are there graduate courses if you're asking whether you can get a master's in forensic and criminal psychology here in NUS? The answer is not at the moment, not yet. Hmm. Okay. Um, question about textbooks and materials. Uh, do students have to buy them or are they generally available online? Mm. Typically, you'll be buying a textbook, I think it's fair to say, for most of the core modules. Um, the other modules, it's going to vary a lot, but it's not unusual that there's a textbook associated with the module that you're expected to buy. Um, obviously, more and more um, material has been made available online, um, but right now, I think it's still fair to say most modules, you'll have to, sorry, um, buy a textbook. Okay. Um, a double major in psych and so sociology, would you recommend doing that? It depends on you again, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the same question. <laughs> I think it's too hard to answer. Yeah, I mean, we have to know you in order to give you a good recommendation, honestly. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next question about lectures, tutorials, labs. Um, how are they uh, being carried out, uh, especially during this time? Mm. Yeah, during this time, yeah, they're all online. Mm -hmm. um, we fast has made the decision to go online for the next semester. So um, exactly how that will be done is down to each um, instructor. But yeah, they'll all be they'll all be online. Next semester, I, I'm very hopeful we'll go back to a, a, at least a mix of face to face and online. Mm -hmm. um, okay, if I only take uh, one hundred one E in year one sem one, can I take a core module such as uh, biopsych with PL two one three one in year one sem two? I think the answer to that is yes. Do you know for sure, Lineng? Yes, I think so. I think yeah. you can do that. Yeah, I believe you can. Yep. Mm. Okay, um, well, we'll come down to our last maybe two questions. Uh, so the first one would be um, psych majors also working in public sectors like marketing or PR. Uh, how are these jobs related to psychology? As I said, right, psychology is a general degree. And actually the key thing is that when people hire people, when the companies hire people with a general degree is because they assume that they need to train you specifically for their job in the first place. So in this case, if they're willing to hire you, they are thinking that, hey, it doesn't really matter what degree you have. I just need to know that you have basic competency, you have skills. I think that's the important thing. Are you able to learn fast? Are you able to think clearly and be able to express yourself clearly? And these are some of the things that we actually try to get our students to develop in the psych degree course that we have here. Yep. Okay, great. Um, a question about getting a psych degree now. Um, would that be an advantage to pursue psychiatry um, by going to medical school later on? That's hard to say. You know, and, and again, an advantage over who? A bad degree in psychology is probably not going to do you any good at all if you want to go to medical school and do psychiatry, whereas a really good degree in history would probably be better um, under those circumstances. But broadly, sure. Um, if you really want, are interested in psychiatry, if that's your path, then psychology makes sense and that, it'll put you in good stead at the interview to explain why you did psychology. But more than that, we, we, we can't promise anything. Yep. Okay. I agree. Great. So maybe just to um, round off this session, um, a question about you know, the first year of, first year of study. Um, what are some popular modules that, um, people tend, tend to take, um, any modules that you would suggest to take um, in, the, in, your, in a student's first year of study? Well, yeah. Some popular modules to take if you want to major in psychology. Uh, we, in psychology, if you have read the modules, we only have one 1,000, which is Introduction <laughs> to Psychology. So if you don't take that module, you're not going to major in psychology. Okay, that's it. Yeah. And we only have two 2,000 modules, which are yeah. both your research and statistics course, right? So you have to take them. If not, again, you can't really major in psychology. So at least 101, 2131 are two modules you definitely have to take. Uh, and I definitely would suggest that you take them in year one. Okay, okay great. Um, I think we're gonna uh, draw this session to a close. So for students, I'm really sorry that we couldn't get through all the questions. Um, if you have anything further, of course, you can um, check out the website, check out also the e-talk um, that has been put up onto the orientation website. Um, and uh, I think you'll be able to find most of the information there. Uh, thank you so much, um, Prof. Dabisha and also uh, Dr. Lee. Uh, any final thoughts for the students here? I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> we always get lots of questions about how do I do well and what are my options and what are my alternatives? And, and, and I understand those questions and those are fair. But ultimately, psychology is, is not an easy degree. It's difficult. You know, as I say in my talk, William James called it a nasty subject and he wasn't kidding. So you really should pursue it if there's, there's some reason why you are particularly interested in psychology, that, that's, that's gonna stand you in the best stead for doing well in the degree. I think Stuart captured it well. You know that psychology inherently is interesting. I think many people 
tell me because you're interested, uh, but it is tough. Okay, lots of content. You have to do statistics, and that's part and parcel of the discipline itself. So if you're not prepared to do that, then it's gonna be a difficult journey for you, right? But if you are, you're open to learn. Uh, it's a great and fascinating subject that you can learn a lot from. Great. Um, so that was uh, Associate Prof. Uh, Stuart Dabisha, as well as Dr. V. Li Neng. Thank you uh, both so much for taking time out to come and speak to the freshmen. Um, I'm sure you'll be seeing many of them in your classes in the coming semester. Great. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Okay, now, for everyone thank you. else, yeah, thank you. For everyone else, um, of course, if you have any questions, continue to uh, just raise them um, via phone, via email.